Thank you so much, and uh, thanks for the opportunity to share with you here today. Uh, we're going to do a bit of a team presentation, so that means you'll hear from me, uh, and then you'll hear from Fernando, and then you'll hear from Frederick. Uh, our agenda is right on the screen, and so feel free to take as many pictures as you like of the screen, And uh, but apparently this will also be made available on the website after the fact. So, uh, great to be with you here today. Uh, this is our agenda. We're going to be opening by talking about Hemp 101, which is essentially an overview of cannabis, and then from there we'll proceed to the economic and industrial impact of hemp, and then the therapeutic uses, the socio-economic impact, and then what is the next steps for us uh, as a company, and of course, where we'd like to go with this. And uh, so, I'll just make sure that our remote control is on. It's on, somehow. So, I'll sort that out, but we'll do that. So Canada Pacific Solutions is a Filipino-Canadian company that's operating in the Philippines. So we are actually incorporated here in the Philippines. Our uh, lead group is uh, four Filipinos uh, who are also Canadian citizens, and then one half Filipino, and you're looking at that guy right here. And uh, the reason I describe myself as half Filipino is because I'm uh, very happily married uh, to uh, a, a lo lovely Filipina from the province of Marinduque. And I'll talk about her in just a moment. Uh, this is a, a little bit about our team and who's going to be presenting to you here today. And so I'd like to first off introduce uh, our Chief Executive Officer. This is Frederick Montilla. And of course, this is a picture of his uh, wife and daughter. Fred actually has uh, so many children that we couldn't fit them into one image. Uh, and <laughs> she actually has five children. Uh, we just took the youngest and put her there. Uh, and of course, your wife is from Iloilo. Uh, and uh, Frederick actually grew up uh, close to here. And so he's our Chief Executive Officer. Uh, this is Mr. Fernando Pella, and uh, Fernando is our Chief Financial Officer. And there's Fernando with his family, and we're so grateful for Fernando and uh, his contributions to our team. And then, of course, you have myself, and uh, I'm the Chief Operating Officer. Uh, there's a picture of my beautiful wife. How many think I'm one of the luckiest guys in the room? And uh, of course, uh, our daughter, her name is Jasmine. Uh, when I met my wife, um, you know, and sometimes uh, three words can change your life. And, uh, you know, I knew that we were going to be meeting. Uh, we decided that we would meet in Starbucks. And uh, this was in Canada. She'd been in Canada for a couple of years. So my wife is a very successful on entrepreneur. She's an IT professional. Uh, she runs an IT company, and, and she's doing excellent with that. And so I was trying to think, you know, what can I say to her? So thank God for Google, because when you don't know... Uh, to Gallup, you know, Google can help, and this was probably 10 years ago. And so I went up to my wife and I said, Messiah, come up. And uh, she looks at me like, who's this weird white guy in Starbucks asking me, you know, are you the Messiah? And she's like, what are you saying? And so I said it again, Mas Messiah, come up. And uh, she's like, what? And, and, uh, and then finally she, kept, she caught what I was trying to say, Messiah, come up. Are you happy, right? And she answered, and uh, I can tell you, she's never been happier since she said yes to me. And uh, we've been married together now for uh, almost 10 years. So just, just wanted to get you to know a little bit about us, because uh, obviously, uh, you know, a, a company is not really about the products, but how many of you know it's about the people, right? And if the management team knows what they're doing, and if they're locked and loaded with a strategic plan that makes sense, then you have confidence that they're going to get where they need to go. So you can see a lot more about our background uh, right here in this slide. We're not going to go into that because you'll have access to it. What we really want to do is dive into him. And so at this point, I'd like to introduce our CFO, Fernando, and he's going to take you through some of the elements of that. And I'll try to get this sorted out for you. Uh, thank you. And uh, thank you again for this opportunity uh, that you've given us to talk about talk about you. Now, earlier today, um, when we came in, um, I was asked if this is a baka, right? because a baka is Malita Ham, right? Uh, and I said, no, it's uh, something more exciting. Um, and it's the um, cannabis hemp that we're going to talk about. But this has, this product or this plant even has the potential of actually complementing or supplementing the leadership position of the Philippines as the foremost uh, abaca producer and exporter. So we're going to talk to you about that, the opportunities. But first, 
then we go through some basic terms and concepts uh, that you will hear throughout the presentation. So sort of like a, a, a hemp 101. Um, so let's talk about cannabis first, right? Which is the main family. Um, and, um, and as a plant, it's a flower, flowering plant that has over 500 um, chemical compounds. Now, the biggest group is called the cannabinoids. And I'm sure that you've heard uh, there's two cannabinoids that have been well researched and well published. And first is the tetrahydrocannabinol, or THC. And that is the compound that makes you high. And then there's cannabidiol, or CBD. Uh, that's the main uh, cannabinoid that ha has been researched mainly for uh, medical purposes, right? So there are uh, a lot more cannabinoids, and as human beings, we're actually engineered to, um, to accept cannabinoids because uh, part of our body, there are two receptors that are actually um, used uh, as a way to make uh, cannabinoids absorb uh, our body. So that's the main chemical group in, uh, in cannabis. Now, there's, there are also non-cannabinoids. Uh, the first is, is called terpenes, and these are fragrant oils used for flavors and fragrance, uh, and is, uh, and is uh, derived from the plant. Now, the other non-cannabinoid group is called flavonoids. So these are pigments found primarily in the flowers, leaves, and stems of the cannabis plant. And this is uh, the chemical compound that actually gives you that unique smell of the cannabis plant, that must be the smell of, of uh, cannabis. So flavonoids um, is the chemical, uh, chemical compounds that are responsible for that. Now, THC and CBD, when you mix them, that defines the potency of the, uh, the medicinal characteristics of, uh, of cannabis. So if mixed, you can either have a euphoric or relaxing effect, or sedative use for uh, the medical uh, cannabis products. So we're gonna talk about THC and CBD um, uh, more in detail throughout the presentation. Now, this is an important slide because this is where we, get, we need to differentiate what is cannabis, what is hemp, and what is marijuana. So cannabis is the main family of the plant. So cannabis includes many species, and two of those species is hemp, okay, which is a variety that is grown very tall and has very low levels of THC, very low levels of THC. Then you have marijuana, which is um, a variety grown with high levels of THC. So marijuana is the variety of cannabis that makes you high, and it is considered a dangerous drug. Well, hemp is not, but they're all part of the cannabis family. They're both part of the cannabis family. Now, let's use the US uh, regulations to define more what hemp is. Now, before 2018, hemp uh, was actually heavily regulated. Right? Um, but what differentiates hemp from marijuana is the content or the THC content. So hemp is a plant that has a THC content of less than 0.3%. So what does that mean? Right? So it does not make you hot. If you smoke hemp, like a one joint of hemp, it doesn't make you hot. You need like 30 hectares of hemp to smoke in order to get high. So, so hemp is the plant that has low levels of THC. Now, in 2018, 
when the U.S. passed the Farm Bill. So before that, hemp was still heavily regulated. And in the U.S., you can only do research on hemp-based products. When they passed the Farm Bill, it pretty much liberalized the hemp industry. So due to the Farm Bill, hemp is now just an ordinary plant that you can cultivate and then you can uh, process into other uses, right? So, but, but it's still regulated, right? So you can only, in the U.S., you can only cultivate hemp and you have to keep within the threshold of 0.3% THC. So the Farm Bill puts in place the regulatory environment for farmers to actually plant cultivate and uh, produce hemp uh, products. Now, marijuana, right, part of the cannabis uh, family, um, has, is a Schedule One controlled substance. So it's still prohibited. Right? So hemp is regulated, marijuana is prohibited. So the chemical makeup, as I said, is low levels of THC, but very high levels of CBD. That's hemp. So the high ratio of CBD to the THC uh, classifies hemp as a fiber type plant rather than a drug type plant. Now marijuana, on the other hand, has very high levels of THC that is concentrated in the flowers and less extent in the leaves. Now, on the average, THC levels for marijuana is between 10 to 12%. And, um, and research shows that in order to get high, right, you need 10 to 15% of uh, THC content. However, there are now varieties for air. THC levels range from 20 to 30 percent or even stronger. And that is why marijuana is still a controlled substance. It does contain CBD as well. All right, so now that uh, we've established that cannabis is the main family, hemp is one variety, and there's also marijuana. What are the production uh, practices? So in hemp, it is only the male plants that are encouraged to grow. Uh, so hemp is grown taller, so we have hemp plants that range from 18 to 20 feet, uh, with less branching. And that is because hemp, um, the main uses of hemp is, is fiber. So you have to grow hemp uh, tall for, for their fibers. Um, and it's densely planted to discourage branching and flowering. So if you see some news articles where AN soldiers are cutting plants that are like twice their size, that's probably hemp, not marijuana. Now for marijuana, uh, the female uh, the female side is actually encouraged to grow, not the male side. So marijuana is cultivated to produce flowers um, in our short and tightly clustered. So marijuana plants would be this high. And sometimes uh, female plants are hand pollinated to, to get the seed. So it's more of the uh, proliferation that's, that's being practiced. Now, um, in order to grow marijuana for its efficacy, you actually need a master grower. There's a certain expertise in place in order to produce hybrid marijuana for medical purposes. Right? Um, the marijuana that's grown in the wild, they're probably not medical grade because it has to, it has to grow in a controlled environment. Now, um, since the introduction of the farm bill, uh, many farmers in the U.S. have started to cultivate hemp. And so through their experience, it has proven to be a hardy and fast-growing and resilient and high-yield crop. Now, it's a high-value 
crop. And thus, uh, Abe and my colleagues would explain um, the many uses of hemp and why we call it a high value, high value crop. Now, it's a good potential um, to be an alternative in being included in conversation with other crops. crops. And as I mentioned, it has the potential of actually complementing and supplementing the leadership uh, position of the Philippines as um, one of the, uh, the, the exporters of, uh, of fibers in, in the world, uh, which is because of Apaka. Uh, if you have Apaka and hemp, then we have the opportunity to be leaders in both sources of, of fiber. And it has a short growing period from 85 to 120 days which makes it well suited for cultivation in many parts of the world. But the ideal place to grow cannabis, and therefore hemp, is within the equator, which where the Philippines is, is located. And it planted at the proper time, it suppresses weeds, but in order for you to, uh, to cultivate it and, uh, and see its potential, it must be managed like any other product. And so with that, uh, questions uh, uh, later? All right, okay. Thank you. Thank you, sir. And so I'm gonna continue by talking about the economic and industrial impact of hemp, along with therapeutic and socioeconomic. Uh, thank you, Fernando, for clarifying that when you're talking about hemp, you're not talking about a product that can make you high. So some of the issues around crime, social disorder, concerns about dangerous drugs, it frankly just does not exist. Now, we understand the legal framework in the Philippines at the present time, but from a pure medical perspective, we need to really try to understand the differentiation between the products and the crops that we're dealing with. So I want to dive in and talk about the economic and industrial impact of hemp because I love to talk about how we can transform economies and transform really the world by making some money. Now, hemp has, the plant of hemp has up to 50,000 different uses. Um, you know, if you compare that to me, I've got about three or four good uses. So hemp is much more useful than the guy that you're looking at right here this morning. And uh, you know, when you think about hemp, you know, there's, there's value in the seeds. So the seeds themselves. And then there's value in the stock. And so that's, of course, everything that's happening here. And then there's value in the roots. And then over here, there's value in the leaves and the flowers. And so from an environmental sustainability perspective, this is almost one of the only crops where every single part of it, you're actually able to put to industrial, economic, and medical use for good. And again, we're making this all available to you after. Uh, but let's take a look at it. So fiber uh, from stocks can be used to making paper, textiles, rope, or twine. As a matter of fact, many of the uh, you know, historians theorize that the uh, sails, the ropes that were used in, in Christopher Columbus across the Atlantic, that they were likely uh, based on hemp. And uh, grain from industrial hemp can be used in food products, cosmetics, plastics, and fuel. And so under the area of textiles, you've got clothing, diapers, handbags, denim, shoes, fine fabrics. Under industrial textiles, you've got rope, canvas, tarps, carpeting, netting, caulking, molded parts. Under paper, you've got printing, newsprint, cardboard, packaging. Under foods, you've got hemp seed, you've got hemp seed oil, you've got hemp protein powder, you've got food supplements. Under building materials, you've got oil paints, varnishes, printing inks, all of which are environmentally sustainable all of which do not need to have all kinds of chemicals added to them that will pollute the environment. You've got insulation from hemp. You've got fiberboard. I know you don't need insulation so much in the Philippines, but definitely in Canada, where it's minus 40, right now where we live, you need insulation. You get uh, body care, so soaps, shampoos, lotions, balms, cosmetics. Do you know that the strongest concrete, one of the strongest concretes they can make in the world, guess where it comes from? Hemp. With no nasty environmental side effects. Do you know what the greatest polluting industry on planet Earth is? Concrete. It's actually the industry that does more environmental damage when you look at the total footprint than any other industry on Earth, and hemp can solve that problem. It's a miracle crop, absolute miracle. Now what's the size of the market? Well, 
you know, what they're telling us is that by 2016, sorry, 2026, the U.S. market for hemp is 14 billion. But this forecast was actually done a while ago. Did you know that in 2018, so this is not that long ago, the state of Colorado alone did 1.2 billion U.S. dollars in hemp. Now think about that. We're talking about a state with maybe 5 million people, 1.2 billion out of just one state. And so the, the economic capacity of hemp is profound. Why? Because this is the one crop that can grow to full maturity in 18 weeks and has one application after another. And so that's why we're so excited about it. Here's a case study that was done in Kentucky. And, uh, and so they uh, found, and this was done by a uh, university out of the UK, and they found three reasons why Kentucky might gain a huge share of the industrial hemp industry. Uh, what they were trying to do as the economy is changing all over the world is think about how can we transition people and uh, how many of you agree that's a challenge here in the Philippines as well, right? How do we transition? It's a challenge in Canada. How do we embrace the global economy? How do we innovate? And so what they discovered was that if Kentucky became the first state to legalize industrial hemp, it would have this massive long-term advantage over other states. And what they discovered was this multiplier effect. And you can read about here. They had more money in circulation to pay for food, transportation, clothing. And here's what they found. In a county with one facility for hemp and one industrial paper uh, pulp plant, 771 full-time equivalent jobs and $17.6 million in worker earnings were created. That's why in 2018, President Trump signed an executive order which allowed for hemp now to be produced in all 50 U.S. states. Okay? Uh, hemp is completely legal for production, cultivation, right across the United States. Completely legal production, cultivation, all over Europe. Same with Canada. You know, so this is essentially where the world is going. And of course they, they do that because they see the economic impact. And check this out. They said if just one fourth, 25% of Kentucky's 90 agriculture communities, so there's, there's a, they're, they're an agricultural state, much like the Philippines as a country, and if they went into industrial hemp business, and this is just the state of Kentucky, okay, just one state, that 17,000 jobs would be created and 396 million in worker earnings would be generated annually. So how many think that's pretty cool? Pretty good benefit, right, from hemp. And it's hard to argue with the numbers. Uh, you know, you can argue philosophically, but when you see the business case, uh, that's what I get excited about. So, you know, like uh, Fernando mentioned, uh, the Philippines is located in essentially the best cultivation area for hemp and it's positioned to reward it. So we're talking about exports, we're talking about jobs, we're talking about entrepreneurship because you're unleashing innovation. When you have one product that has 50,000 uses, you're taking all the limits off of people and you're creating entrepreneurship. So one way to unlock the economic potential of the Philippines is to look at its many uses, and so we've looked at that. Uh, we're not gonna spend a lot of time on this. Uh, one of the amazing things about hemp is that it actually cleanses the soil of heavy metals as it's growing. And so it doesn't so much take from the soil, but it gives back to the soil, which is amazing. And if hemp can take the place of trees, or at least integrate into a tree uh, you know, ecosystem as a source of paper, then what does this do? This means less clear cutting. And how many would agree that with climate change on the radar, we need to be putting more forests into the ground rather than clear cutting it so we have toilet paper. And the difference with hemp is you can grow a full hemp tree in 18 weeks. Whereas that tree that we just cut down to make our toilet paper, that took 15 to 25 years, right? And so you can solve so many of the environmental challenges that we have. So that's the economic and industrial impact. I know we're moving fast, but you guys are smart. Matalino, it's a Matalino group here, right? So now let's take a look, quick look at the therapeutic benefits of hemp. Therapeutic. So CBD oil has some incredible benefits. Now, CBD from hemp is actually legal in all 50 U.S. states, so there are no legal concerns about CBD from hemp. Why? Well, because look at the incredible benefits for your body. We're talking about pain relief. We're talking about relief of nausea, cardiovascular health. We're talking about lower risk of diabetes for your mind. CBD oil relieves anxiety, depression, PTSD. 
all of the mental health concerns that we're seeing all over the world. And of course, we also can see some of the benefits of CBD on this screen. Now look at this. I mean, we're talking about pain management. It's an antioxidant. It's an anti-convulsant. It's an anti-psychotic. I mean, it's anti all of the right things that you want it to be. And how can help help your body? Well, it impacts your brain. It can impact positively your hands. It can impact your stomachs. It can impact your legs, even your intestines, your eyes, and your heart. All from CBD that comes from hemp. And so that's the therapeutic. Now let's just take a quick peek at the socioeconomic impact of hemp, and then I'm going to turn it over to our CEO, Frederick Montilla. So in humans, this is according to the WHO, CBD exhibits no effects. So not, not slight effects, not minor effects, but it, it, it indicates no effects of any abuse or dependence potential. So there is no concern around addiction. There is no concern when you're talking about regulated hemp when it comes to some of the issues about people getting high or addicted. To date, there is no evidence zero evidence of public health problems associated with the use of pure CBD. So a focused and efficiently regulated industry, we're talking about hemp, can address parts of the country's health agenda. Now we're talking about the Philippines. We all know that there's a health agenda in the Philippines from 2016 to 2020 that's really all about protecting poor and marginalized Filipinos from the cost of health care, which is really high. And so in the Philippines, here's what's interesting. This is the 2017 ranking of health problems that actually cause the most disability. Now you might not think that disability is a huge issue, but when somebody's disabled, what are they not able to do? They're not able to work. And if they're not able to work, they're not able to positively contribute to the economy. They're not able to pay their taxes, and all of us suffer. And so here's what's amazing. The very first uh, rank in terms of disability in the Philippines is low back pain, headaches, diabetes, COPD. Did you know that hemp will help with number one, number two, and number three at an extremely low cost? And of course, much healthier rather than moving to prescription drugs, which is where so much of the world has gone, unfortunately. And so not only do these medicines cost a lot, but they take away from economic, uh, the impact of productivity. And then here's what they discover. Now this was a comparison between a well-known pain medication, we're not going to name it, and a CBD alternative. So they compared a drug from your doctor versus CBD. And they found that the cost of an annual therapy can be reduced by more than 200%. And so they discovered in the US it was going to cost you about $2,400 for that pain medication, whereas if you had a CBD alternative, you're reducing that to less than 1000 And so this is not just a product that's going to benefit us industrially. It's not just going to benefit us economically, but it's also going to benefit the poorest and the most marginalized in all of our societies. The use of CBD is increasingly being linked to reduction of opioid use and dependence as well. And that's a major problem in the United States, a major problem in Canada, and of course, uh, maybe here too. And so when medical cannabis laws went into effect in a given state, opioid prescriptions actually went down massively by 2.21 million daily doses filled per year. And of course, um, as we look to the future, uh, the research on this is not yet complete. And so what does that mean? That means that there are teams in Singapore, there are teams all over Europe. Uh, Israel is a massive hemp production value adding center. I mean, the smartest people on earth are getting all into hemp. Why? Because they can see the massive impact on so many levels. So with that, I can turn over to Frederick and uh, please uh, bring us home. Well, uh, good morning, everyone. Good morning. Again, my name is Frederick Montilla. I am the founding partner and chief executive officer of Canada Pacific Solutions. In Canada, I am also an investment advisor and portfolio manager by trade been operating for 18 amazing years. Now, um, before I start recommending investments to all of my investors, after reading their financial statements, I have to look at the team. I need to look at the management team 
if they have the capacity to get their objectives done. Um, so this is how Canada Pacific Board of Directions was formed. Um, I, you know, starting from um, Abe here, who is our chief operating officer. Uh, he has he owns many businesses in Canada. He's also the president of the Federation of Coaches. Fernando Cala here is a uh, an economist. He handled the ASEAN trade and the uh, DTI uh, under President Gloria Arroyo. Um, our chief uh, compliance officer, he is a project manager of a large oil and gas company. And our chief marketing officer is one of a great branding guru in Calgary. So I believe uh, Canada Pacific has the right team to get this executed right here in the Philippines. Now, the opportunity. Um, as I said, as an investment advisor and portfolio manager, um, for 18 years I've been in this industry and I have never seen a companies that operates in the cannabis sector, industrial hemp, went from a valuation of 100 million to 15 billion dollars in a span of a year. I have never seen it. It is a phenomenon. I have never seen a small state in the United States like Oregon with 4.1 million people as a population generated $650 million in a year. I have never seen it. Now, North American markets, Canada and US, are opening up their borders. Again, they open up their borders with industrial hemp because they know all of these benefits. But by all means, there are growing pains. And the growing pain they have and the, the problem they're trying to solve are two things. One, they can only have one crop a year. Two, the high cost of production. These are the problems that they're facing right now. Now, as an entrepreneur, I believe in two things. One, I want to learn from other people's mistakes. I don't want to make my own mistakes. I just want to learn it from other people. Second, I believe in combining the best of both worlds. And why do I say that? Well, first of all, I believe that with the technology, Western technology, research, and information, and we combine it with Philippines' top minds, with our climate, tropical climate, and again, our farmers, and our lower uh, cost of labor will be a recipe for success. That's what I believe, right? Now, um, Thailand understands the problem in North America. And so they legalized a couple of months ago, fully legalized, recreation and hemp. They're facing their own uh, you know, uh, regulatory problems that uh, you know, I think is great for the Philippines because again, we can learn from their mistakes. Uh, Malaysia follows suit, the second domino to fall. Singapore released a $20 million fund for research and development for the industrial hemp, because they want to play in the space. I say this because we believe the Philippines is not only a player in the hemp industry, but could be the world global market leader. So by saying that, we have I, I like what I've seen earlier in the song, that we must dare together, right? Let's not wait for other ASEAN countries to get ahead, and there already are, right? Let's not wait until the Philippines are last. We want to be the leading edge. We don't want to be the bleeding edge, right? So, having said that, our ask. Well, first of all, support. As you guys well know, it is still considered an illegal plant here in the Philippines. We are talking to legislators, we are talking to um, stakeholders and letting them know the difference between industrial hemp and marijuana. One politician asked me one day, he said, Frederick, what is the difference between uh, cannabis and hemp? I said, sir, cannabis is hemp. Maybe the better question is, what's the difference between marijuana and hemp? So the information is not there. Now I hope today you've learned the difference between medical marijuana or marijuana and industrial hemp. Because with that information, we can now talk to all of your contacts, legislators, politicians, and say, hey, 
there, there's zero psychoactive effect. Think about this for a second. It is included in a Schedule One drug in the same category as crystal meth and cocaine, where it has zero psychoactive effect. Once you start researching why, well, actually, I would encourage all of you guys to research the name called Randolph Hearst. This gentleman is the one who actually create, uh, uh, made a way to protect his business interests back in the 1900s and actually uh, paved the way for it, uh, him to be listed as Schedule One. It's mainly to protect his paper business. So support, <coughs> right? Uh, another thing is the opportunity. Um, we're here right now, kind of Pacific is always is, is capital uh, doing some capital raise right now in Asia. We're here in the Philippines. We are definitely talking to many investors right now who are extremely interested in partnering with us. Um, it, you know, some of you guys here may want to sit down with us, and by all means, we would love to connect and talk to you guys about the investment opportunities um, that we offer. Uh, I do want to um, make one thing clear. Our company is not just looking for capital, but we are looking for strategic partners who can see this through with us over the long term. It's not just money. I've worked in the money business in 18 years, and let me tell you, I will, in order to have a successful business, you must be in sync with people that you're working with. So we are looking for strategic partners that can get us to. Our vision is not just to be a player in this space. Our vision is to help the Philippines develop social economics, hire thousands of people, help farmers, and we want to be world leaders in the hemp industry. As we showed earlier, there will be three major players in the world. One will be Southern America, second would be Africa, and third will be Asia. There are sectors in the United States and Canada, but let me tell you, they will not play in the global scale. Why? Because they can only have one crop, and five months a year, they have sub-zero weather. So they cannot play in that space. Right. Again, investing, we're, you know, if some of you guys here want to sit down with us, we would love to connect. With that, ladies and gentlemen, again, we want to thank you guys for the opportunity. We were here last September as a guest, and you know, we wanted to introduce our company. We want to educate as many people about the difference between marijuana and hemp. Um, again, Happy New Year to all, and I would like to open the floor for question and answer. Okay, we're